Governor Jerry Brown and House Democratic Leader Nancy Pelosi joined Northern California's congressional delegation and local leaders for the official groundbreaking, which will move the Caltrain system from decrepit diesel trains to quiet, clean, environmentally safe electric trains running from San Jose to San Francisco by early 2021. Our congressional delegation who, who through some magic, Push this through the uh, Trump administration. I don't know how. This is an extraordinary day. I got to say, this groundbreaking is a reality because there was an extraordinary regional effort by San Francisco, San Mateo, and Santa Clara counties. And I would say to anyone, when this region really comes together as one, Watch out. Not even a diesel train can stop us. Let me just start out by saying this is a moment of history. And just as this train moves up and down a very large corridor, it took every community, every mayor, every city council member, every transportation agency, every business organization, every environmental organization. Caltrain is one of the oldest West Coast rail lines built during Abraham Lincoln's administration. Caltrain is needed now more than ever. It was a nine hour stagecoach ride in 1863. On bad days, it's not much better today in a car ride. We can chart Caltrain's evolution from steam and diesel to electricity from smoking cars to bike cars, from way depots to transit hubs, from telegraph lines to Wi-Fi. The sound will be no more. The smoke coming from the diesel engines will be no more. The speed with which they go, the slowness with which they leave the station will be no more. They will be faster, quicker, quieter, cleaner, what a great opportunity for all of us. The next generation of Caltrain service means maximizing the capacity of this rail corridor, upgrading stations and platforms to accommodate more riders, linking to the new transit connections like BART in San Jose, and extending the system to new stations like the Trans Bay Transit Center in downtown San Francisco. This corridor electrification removes 619,000 vehicle miles off this corridor. It will reduce 176 metric tons of CO2 emissions from the corridor. Converting Caltrain service from diesel equipment to high performance electric trains will transform the way we travel between San Jose and San Francisco. Look, these, uh, these trains coming whether it's about families getting together, people going to work, products getting to market, we all pin our hopes on public mass transit. It's very, very important to all of us. And if you don't think that this train is important to San Mateo County and to this whole Bay Area, just drive down 101 around 6 p.m. It is uh, jammed and you can't get anywhere. So this train, not only is it gonna be good for the environment, but it's also obviously going to carry more people, take more of those cars off of Highway 101. Raise your hand if you think the Bay Area will be a better place with an additional million cars on the road. Uh, because if we don't do this kind of work in dramatically, dramatically expanding the capacity of our public transportation systems in the Bay Area, we will have another million cars on the road because the region's going to grow by 2 million people in the next 25 years. California has 32 million vehicles. We use 18, 18 billion gallons of gasoline and diesel, and we collectively drive 335 billion miles a year. How many more can we add to that? Not so many. In fact, we probably ought to reduce that by getting on a train. We're about next week to approve Plan Bay Area 2.0, the, the latest version of a sustainable community strategy for the Bay Area. This is at the very core, this project, what it is going to bring is at the very core of what we're trying to do 
to do, as Scott said, reduce these vehicle miles travel, get people off the car into transit. That this corridor is home to 1.6 million jobs. It's home to 20% of the sales tax generation in the entire Golden State, 53% of all of California's patents, and 13% of California's gross domestic product. The federal government has been a partner on transportation infrastructure with state and local governments for a long period of time. Transportation officials have been told by the White House that cities and states will now have to shoulder the multi-billion dollar infrastructure burden on their own and not count on the federal government. So Caltrain, you're very lucky to be the last one under the wire right now to get your full funding grant agreement but there's another 50, more than 50 projects at $38 billion that are at risk. There's 800,000 jobs at risk, $90 billion of economic uh, output that is at risk uh, for where we are uh, in this particular cycle. In Millbrae, Mark Jones reporting.